Hey, what's up, Bay? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new Webflow Spline integration, and I'm gonna show you how to build this scrolling 3D interaction in Webflow. So let's get to it. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so here in Spline, you're gonna to wanna to click over to Community, and I just searched for Speaker, and I got this result by NW, NW iFlash, and I just went ahead and opened it and then clicked the Remix button here. Now this is gonna take a minute to prepare your file and then open it in a new Spline window. And once we have this thing open in Spline, I'm gonna take this top level group nine and just rename it to speaker. This is just the top level group that I'm gonna target in the Webflow interaction. And then I'm gonna reset the position to zero, zero, and zero. And now it's gone off on our camera so we can right click and click reset camera. And now this thing ends up right in the center here. And I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and start with this. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna click export here and I'm gonna come down to viewer. And on viewer, it looks like we can make some optimizations. So let's go ahead and run a test. And it says the export size is a bit large. So let's go ahead and just remove some of these lights that they don't that they recommend removing. A uh, number of materials, nothing I can do about that right now. Remove unused assets, let's go ahead and do that. And also clean up the scene by removing colors. So we run test and I don't see any improvement in time, but who knows what happens. Anyways, let's click export again and we'll come over to the play settings and I'm going to disable orbit, pan, zoom, and soft orbit. And then we'll just click update viewer here. Now we can click back over to overview here and we're just gonna copy this viewer link right up here. So I just click that button and it says link copy to keep one. Now here in Webflow, I have an outer div with a class of scroll track. And then in that I have a hero and two features. So we can see scrolling down, we just have all of these. And then the actual feature layout and the hero layout are setting the height to 100 viewport heights. So we can see that over here. Okay, I'm gonna drop in a spline scene now and I'll drag this up to be right under the scroll track. And let's go ahead and drop our URL right here. And we'll load the spline scene up just like that. And now the spline scene, I want to have a height of 100 SVH. So that's taking up the whole screen there. And then we'll set the position to be sticky, zero pixels from the top. And we wanna make sure that scroll track is set to relative since we set that to sticky. And let's rename this to spline. And I'm gonna give it a Z index of negative one. And if I scroll down, I can see that our hero has shifted down by 100 viewport heights, which is the height of spline. So we'll just take hero here and we'll shift it up by negative 100 SVH. And there we go. Now we see our title back up here. And as we scroll, our speaker is staying sticky in the track and we're seeing all of our features as well. Now let's go ahead and start working on our interaction. So I'll grab the scroll track div here and come over to the interactions tab and I'm going to add a while scrolling in view interaction. I just want this to trigger on desktop. We'll have to modify this action if we want it to work on mobile, but I'm just gonna cover desktop in this lesson. So let's go ahead and play a scroll animation and we'll set the animation boundaries such that it starts when the element is fully visible and the end animation when it is fully invisible. Now let's go ahead and add the animation. All right, now I'm going to select spline and I'll go ahead and create our 0% key keyframe and we'll grab spline here. And let's go ahead and grab the speaker element. And now I can start playing with these values in my keyframes. One thing I did notice in working with this is that the spline scene will load however you have the default camera set in the spline scene back in spline. So if you were to set the 0% keyframe to something different, it's gonna load it's gonna load in the initial state, but then won't actually switch until you start scrolling. So you can see, um, I really recommend making your 0% keyframe match up exactly with what you have here at the start. And we'll add zeros to those values. So this is gonna be zero, uh, this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero, and then for rotation, we'll set this to zero, and we'll set the Z to zero, and then we'll also set these to one, the scales. Okay, so now we're ready to get started, and I want to Let's go ahead and enable live preview and I'm gonna scroll down to about where I think the first feature section will be. It looks like it's at 30%, which makes plenty of sense. So let's drag this up to something like 30%. And now we wanna shift this speaker off to the left and maybe zoom it in. So I'm going to select the speaker and we're gonna shift it over to the left. And let's go ahead and drag down to the place where we wanna be. So it'll be right here and click it. And now we've seen that we're shifted over to the left. Let's go ahead and affect some of the, maybe the Z rotation. Yeah, I like that. And let's do kind of like a, a nice angle there. And we'll go ahead and start scaling everything to 1.5, I suppose. 1.5 and 1.5. 
So let's turn on preview and see what we have so far. And you can see the speaker just goes away. Something I noticed is that if you set some of the beginning keyframes, you gotta make sure to set them in each individual keyframe. So we'll come to our second keyframe here and just set these at zero, which is the same as their starting value. And now if we scroll to the top and turn on live preview, we can see our speaker transforming exactly how we want. A good way that I found to manage all of these different properties is to just duplicate each individual keyframe and then drag it to where you want it. So now if we come to 60%, then we know that we want this thing to come over to the right side and we want to price spin it the other way a bit. And we want to affect some more. Let's do some rotation so that the lighting changes because that's pretty nice. And we'll zoom in even more. Let's zoom into two, just like that. And now if we preview this and come to the top, we can see it pans over to the left there and then it starts spinning and rotating down to the right. So that's pretty cool. And just like that, we finished our interaction. So let's have a look, boom, comes over to the left and then down. This would look really great with some scroll smoother or something like that. So I hope you enjoy this and enjoy checking out the new spline integration. All right, you awesome video viewer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to download Webflow Pet Baby Cow on the Chrome extension store and also check out my Patreon. These videos are all made possible by my patrons over in Patreon, and I definitely appreciate their support. And the more support I get, the more videos you get. So go ahead and check that out. And I love making videos so much that I'm going to leave you with one right here that I think you're really going to enjoy watching. See you in the next one.